sister of a New Orleans high school student who was killed in January by accidental discharge has been sentenced to three years probation and around five and a half thousand dollars in restitution paid to the family. 15 year old Kennedy Belton was a freshman at Warren Easton High School. On January 29th, Belton was at a friend's house in New Orleans East. 19 year old Andre Skinner was in the adjoining room tinkering with a gun. He told police as he was taking the gun apart, he did not check to see if the chamber was loaded. I think she could have changed the world because that's just how bright smart and great she was. Thomas Belton's pride is palpable. Tell me about your daughter. She was beautiful, beautiful soul, beautiful spirit, beautiful person. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful person. His grief discernible, as he now refers to his 15-year-old daughter, Kennedy Belton, in the past tense. Heartache and questions linger. It was January 29th, 2023, when Kennedy went to a friend's house in New Orleans. She never came home. Belton gets uneasy thinking about the phone call from Kennedy's mom that changed his life forever. Do you remember what she said? She was crying over the phone. And she said, Kennedy was killed at a sleepover. Somebody give him up, my baby, y'all. I hate New Orleans. I hate that my best friend is not with me. Friends and family memorialized her budding life with a sea of pink and white balloons released high into the sky. Detectives say a 19-year-old in another room was taking a weapon apart when it went off. The bullet traveled through the wall and killed Kennedy. Documents show the gun recovered was untraceable, an unserialized 9mm semi-automatic pistol, a Polymer 80, one of the nation's largest producers of gun kits and parts. Commonly referred to as ghost guns, the weapons are made with kits bought online or using parts purchased without any background checks. Fully assembled, the weapons don't have serial numbers. Well, we don't refer to them as ghost guns. That's kind of a street vernacular term that everybody uses on the street. We call them privately made firearms. Bernard Hansen is a special agent in charge at the Kansas City Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms. He says unserialized weapons have become such a problem in America, the ATF has logged dramatic increases in recent years. The difference between what is called a privately made firearm and a regular firearm is they function the same, but a privately made firearm doesn't have any of the required markings that what uh, firearms you would buy from a licensed dealer that's required by law. Hansen believes these privately made firearms or PMFs are so prolific because they can be assembled in less than an hour. The ATF used 3D printers as examples, showing the ease of how quickly the guns can be made by simply ordering pieces and parts online. So someone who otherwise can legally have a gun could get one pretty easily. This example right here, one of our PMF experts assembled this in less than 24 hours. From start using his 3D printer with the filament to creating this, to adding the parts, was ready to go in under 24 hours. Traditional polymer 80% kit like this with a jig, you don't really have to know what you're doing too much, and you can probably assemble it in an hour. If you're really good, you can do it quicker. Even though there are more registered guns than people in America, the actual number is unknown even to the ATF. That's because we found record keeping for ghost gun data is inconsistent across America's law enforcement agencies. We found at least four major cities, Atlanta, Cincinnati, St. Louis, and Portland, data is not tracked or no records exist. The ATF tracks firearm recoveries through a tracing program, but it doesn't mean all ghost gun data makes it there. The discrepancy could be a result of different terms local agencies use to describe ghost guns. For example, polymer 80s, which are made with kits online, and other hobbyist guns without serial numbers could be classified as PMFs, while other cities may call them ghost guns. Without universal terms, tracking gets tricky. How big is the education component for the local law enforcement agencies so that everybody gets on the same page, like calling it the same thing? It's huge. And, you know, sometimes when terms street vernacular not take over, it's just what society refers to them as. Uh, but us training the locals, whether it's police officers, sheriff's department, deputies, prosecutors, it's getting everybody on the same page so they understand what they're looking at. When a firearm is recovered at a crime scene, the gun is typically processed and run through a firearms program maintained by the ATF. That department will take the gun in, 
when they're doing their, their processing for their investigation, they'll enter it into our tracing program to see if they can determine where the gun was originally manufactured, who was the original purchaser. They help give them leads in their investigation to track down with whatever they know. Investigate TV filed a series of public records requests in 12 cities we picked across America to get their ghost gun or unserialized weapon data. Of the cities that responded, from 2021 to 2023, Las Vegas reported 1,092, Kansas City 128, New Orleans 97, followed by 10 in Cleveland. Nashville started tracking them last year, recovering 56 through the beginning of November 2024. Between 2016 and 2021, the ATF reported 45,240 of such weapons recovered from crime scenes. I would say we've seen a thousand percent increase, and I'm being conservative on that, over the last five to eight years in recoveries. Of those 45,000 ghost gun recoveries, nearly 700 of them were from homicides or attempted homicides. The sobering problem of ghost guns being used in deadly crimes led to new rules on unserialized weapons by the Biden administration. In 2022, the definition of a firearm changed to add unfinished parts to better track them. The rule clarified that these kits qualify as firearms and commercial manufacturers must be licensed, perform background checks, and include serial numbers on them. But since then, there have been questions about whether the White House has that type of authority. In Texas and Louisiana federal courts, judges struck down the change, saying the ATF doesn't have the authority without congressional action. Now the decision on who gets to regulate ghost guns rests with the Supreme Court. As laws catch up with technology, nearly a dozen states have enacted their own bans on ghost guns. For Thomas Belton, no regulations will bring Kennedy back and ease his outrage. Eight months after Kennedy's death, her killer, 19-year-old Andre Skinner, pled guilty to negligent homicide and negligent injuring. Facing five years in prison, her family says Skinner got what amounts to a slap on the wrist. A judge sentenced Skinner to three years of probation and a $5,000 fine. And I, I can't believe that, that we lost a child. It's why Belton is speaking up in hopes of stopping someone else from feeling the throbbing pain now part of his daily life. You buy a gun, this ghost gun, and you take someone else's life and their parents and siblings uh, don't have her around anymore. And you get three years probation, it's, it's unheard of. How do you even digest that? Uh, you, you, I can't, you can't.